Let's uh, move to business now on the programme. Charles Pellegrin is here. He's focusing today, to start with anyway, on that Olympic torch relay. Really the first opportunity, uh, isn't it, Charles, to showcase the Olympic uh, Games sponsors? That's right. Uh, some of the game official, Games official sponsors and partners are uh, using this event to really put their brand for the two main sponsors for the torch relay are Coca-Cola and French banking group BPC, Banque Populaire Caisse d'Epargne. For these two groups, this represents uh, 68 different stages of crisscrossing France over the next uh, couple of months, whether uh, metropolitan or overseas, as you can see on that map there. An opportunity to keep their brands high in people's minds, but also mobilize and motivate their own workforces uh, by offering them the opportunity be, to be one of the tens of thousands of torchbearers. Uh, Coca-Cola and BPC are at the top of the pyramid in terms of sponsoring this event, having paid the most for the privilege. Uh, the Belem, the boat carrying the torch from Greece, for instance, is owned by French banking group Coca-Cola. Meanwhile, uh, is the company behind the, gr the, the concert by, by French rapper Soprano in Marseille. Uh, this was the evening. But there are also lower tiers of participation that include Airbnb, pharmaceutical group Sanofi, and cosmetics group Sephora, who have various activities and workshops in 46 of the cities uh, on the itinerary. For all these companies, uh, the torch relay represents an opportunity to go, to go through uh, 400 different towns and cities, stop overnight at 65 of them, and potentially reach, at least that's what uh, the Paris Olympics organizer, uh, organizers say, as much as 90% of the French population. Yeah, I wonder how they calculated that. Uh, for all these companies, uh, though, Charles, the torch really, I mean, it represents an opportunity, doesn't it, to go through 400 towns and cities. Uh, and there aren't really uh, many events like the Olympic Games. Absolutely. And with the uh, advent of the digital age, media has become much more fragmented. Uh, here in France, people aren't just watching the handful of publicly available TV channels anymore. They have their personal niches on the internet. This makes it harder for advertisers uh, to reach large audiences. The exception tends to be some of these big global events, especially sporting events like the FIFA World Cup, the Super Bowl, and of course, the Olympic Games. Uh, the last four summer editions of the Games have seen at least over three billion people tune in uh, on uh, TV broadcasters for at least one minute during these games. That one minute is still worth it. And that actually doesn't include people watching on other platforms, for example, web platforms. And that represents uh, clearly a big chunk of the world's population of 8 billion. It's going to be huge, isn't it? Now, next in the epilogue to a long running drama, France's nuclear watchdog has just given the green light for the country's newest nuclear power reactor to enter into service. Yeah, the next generation EPR or European pressurized reactor at Flamanville in Normandy will be connected to the grid by around mid-year this summer. It's the combination of years of construction delays and cost overruns. Brian Quinn has details. It's been a long wait for France's electric utility, its nuclear sector, and the government. Their hopes finally realized late Tuesday, as the country's nuclear safety watchdog issued this statement. The Nuclear Safety Agency has authorized the entry into service of the EPR reactor at Flamanville. This authorization allows EDF to load the nuclear fuel into the reactor and to proceed with startup tests and commercial operation of the reactor. Launched in 2007 under President Nicolas Sarkozy, the project has seen a litany of setbacks. Cracks in its concrete slabs, faulty welding, anomalies in the steel of the reactor vessel itself. Construction took 12 years longer than planned, the budget too far beyond initial projections. Including financing costs, France's accounting authority puts the final bill at 19 billion euros instead of the 3.3 billion first estimated. The EPR is a pressurized system designed for more efficiency and safety than older reactors. Two have entered service in China and one in Finland with another under construction at Hinkley Point in the UK. All have faced significant service delays. French electric utility EDF and the government are counting on Flamanville's inauguration to kickstart their plan for more than a dozen new EPRs around the country, a major pillar of Paris's plans to cut carbon emissions. We must build a Europe based on the free circulation of decarbonized electricity. Whether via renewables or nuclear, it doesn't matter. After testing, the new reactor should be connected to the grid within a few months. 
It's expected to produce 1.6 gigawatts per hour by year end, making it the most powerful reactor in the country. Brian Quinn there. Markets now, Charles. What's uh, on the move? Well, let's check in. Uh, in Europe, uh, at the open, we're seeing muted but positive trading. Uh, this Wednesday, the FTSE leading the gains over uh, up uh, four tenths of a percent. But let's zero in on one stock in particular that investors are looking at, French train maker Alstom. The group has struggled with a heavy debt load since its acquisition of Canadian Bombardier's rail business in 2021. It has said this Wednesday that it would ask shareholders for about a billion dollars through a rights issue as part of its plan to cut that debt load. Well, that stock opening lower as a result, down 6%, uh, but uh, since then, uh, picking up. Charles, thanks very much. Charles Pellegrin with the business for us on France 24.